What's up everybody? Welcome from Gdańsk again. Today is a very special day. It's 6 a.m. in the morning. I'm about to finish my morning coffee and pack up my old filming gear and DN Tech Talk is hitting the road. We are about to visit a very special guest today. <music> DM Tech Talk is now coming to a next level and this next level is achieved thanks to Karol who agreed to join the show and Karol will feature a couple of episodes and hopefully I will be also able to convince him to step out on the ice and show the secrets of how to become a champion uh, having helmet on his head and spikes on, on his uh, feet. But before that happens, we have a very interesting schedule of events happening in Carol's shop, demonstrating a very interesting topics related to runners, in future about sales, about physical and uh, technical preparation before season. And Carol, thank you very much for joining us and hopefully feedback from the world, coming from the world, will, will also encourage you to perform in future episodes of DN Tech Talk. Tomek, thank you very much for, for, for having me in this DN uh, Tech Talk. Uh, I am more than happy to share all my experience with you guys. And uh, you know, if you see me on the ice, uh, please come and uh, don't hesitate to contact me and uh, ask uh, questions, uh, simple, more complicated. If I know the answer, I will try to you know, give you the proper one and to explain uh, how, how many things work and uh, what I do and uh, yes, yeah, see you on the ice. Think ice, guys. Yeah, let's like rock and roll. How uh, to measure crown in the runner? Uh, this is the question and uh, I'm gonna try to uh, try to answer you how I do it. And uh, yes, once the runner is finished, how to check it? I have a light behind the straight piece of, 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 of metal, of measurement piece, doesn't matter how you call it. And I put the runner on the straight edge, and then you see the result of your work and the crown of the of the runner so before we start to speak about the crown you see on the straight edge some numbers this is the center of the runner and uh, the numbers are in uh, centimeters this piece of uh, the distance plate has a thickness of uh, 0.2 of millimeter and once the runner is set quite nicely on the on the straight edge I put this piece between the runner and the straight edge and you see it's 25 centi uh, 25 centimeters from the middle of the of the runner in the front this is how we call the entry is 25 and then I go I move back usually I should have a two plates it is easier but uh, at the moment I find only one so and in the back you see I have almost 25 it is like 26 centimeters and uh, I am I am very happy with this uh, with the result of, uh, of my work and uh, very important is that the runner has a straight edge or you know kind of at least this 10 15 cm under the chalk when the edge is of the runner touching is touching the ground and then you start to lift the back part of the runner to the front and just check the smoothness of the crown make sure that the runner doesn't have 
any bumps because sometimes it happens that the runner might have big bumps which is uh, not uh, necessarily very fast so that's it 25 25 this is a medium runner what the straightness uh, if you consider the, consider the straightness of it uh, I got some runners which have 20 cm I got some runners which are 30 cm or 35 cm and uh, all depends on the on the ice conditions and the wind wind strength you wanna you wanna use it so many guys uh, ask me how important is the, the crown and uh, as I said before it is uh, depending on the ice conditions on the wind conditions but what uh, is important uh, or what you what we should think of or what I recommend is always pay a big attention uh, while you sharpening um, that you don't lose you don't lose the length of the of the runner simple by simple doing it but by doing a simple mistake when you just the last 10 cm you sharp quite high and in general my theory is that you need the length of the runner and especially the edge which is uh, close to the eyes the whole length almost and uh, my theory is that the entry always should be 2 cm higher than in the back but if you put the runner on the straight edge I actually Never, never, with the exit of the runner, I am higher than 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 two millimeters, uh, than two millimeters from the from the straight edge, and the entry is the, definitely like five five cm, uh, five millimeters or four millimeters high here. It's all depend on the conditions you wanna use these runners. But yeah, I I did see many many runners where the exit starts already like in this place and then comes very high so to my opinion in my opinion i think you can actually cut the runner here because this is never gonna this is never gonna touch uh, touch the the eyes and you are losing the length and uh, you know it would be good on internet it would be very good if you could use probably uh, longer runners in the DN class, then you would be going faster and smoother straight line. But uh, I mean, we have our class two rules, and the max uh, max size of the of the runner is uh, precisely specified. So you should think of it never, never ever to cut uh, cut too high the exit of it. What is what is the must of well prepared uh, runner? I think definitely you know if you just finish off. If you finish off your, your sharpening, just the simple test you can do it, you just go with the nail through the edge. And uh, if you go smooth, this is just fine. If you, if you just feel something, you have to do some, uh, more, more, more work on the, on, the, on the polishing or on stoning. And uh, how sharp is the runner? I check always the same with the with the nail. So if the nail you see the nail on the on the on the other runner, it means it is it is it is uh, it is sharp enough. What I don't like, I don't like to have a sharp sharp entry, and I don't like to have a sharp exit because this is slowing you down. You know, if you if you if you during tacking or maneuvers going around the around the mark, it is important to have the, uh, the runner sharp here. Definitely, if this ice will be will be softer, you can you can you can send the the, the edge of the of the of the of the runner a little bit in order that the runner is not gonna cut the ice uh, too much and you're not gonna sink too much into the ice. And uh, what about the angle? This is always a good question, and it, it, it mainly depends on the, on 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 on, 
conditions you want to use the runner and depends as well on the weight of the sailor and uh, for my weight uh, for my for, for my weight i mean 85 90 90 degrees i mo i mostly use 95 degrees angle i have a one set runners with 90 degrees which is uh, mainly uh, made for uh, black ice and strong breeze and then i have a few runners with 100 degrees which is um, which are uh, fast in, in, in on the softer ice band but uh, in general uh, for guys uh, who don't have too many runners i would recommend uh, actually you know uh, at the beginning of the season just to start sharpening you know the, the runners on the smoother angle let's say 90 degrees or 95 degrees and then and and then more crown because uh, in the in the beginning of the season we we we, we, we expect the um, harder ice uh, conditions than than, uh, than in the spring and then during the season once you once you just go again on the on the sharpening machine you can change the angle a little bit and um, make the angle bigger and as well make the edge flatter because this is definitely faster on the on the softer ice so important message for for all ice boaters and uh, uh, as well for me, which I, the, 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 the sentence I, I, I keep repeating, there is uh, there's always a crown which is just about to be fast and you have to be uh, actually just, uh, just about right in with the crown. You cannot, uh, you cannot be, uh, you cannot use runners uh, which are which have a crown in extreme way which means which, which they have too much crown or not enough crown and this is why uh, it is important that uh, you keep you keep uh, the crown in the uh, standard uh, uh, i would say measurements because this is a good base and uh, good base for 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 uh, yeah, having a good speed that's why uh, if you see here the kind of measurements the marks the numbers on my on my on my uh, uh, straight edge they simply say you know 20 25 30 and uh, we all know or most of us know that uh, we should be the, the, the all-round runner it is like between 20 25 for normal conditions and i recommend to everybody that to start with it and uh, yes, uh, important is as well that the runner doesn't bump on, uh, on the straight edge. Now, what is else important? Yeah, definitely the, the most important thing is that the runner has uh, to be straight. And how, how, how I check it? You know, when I was young and I had a good eyes, I was checking it with my, with my eye. Now it is getting uh, this more difficult. You see here, I got like three pairs of, of reading glasses uh, here, and because I'm standing, you know, just uh, permanently looking, uh, looking at them, trying to find them, because without them it is very difficult to do. It, it, it takes time to, to, to get a runner straight, and uh, you spend, uh, I mean, you spend a lot of time uh, getting there where you want to be. And uh, about the crown, still, it is important. And very tricky to get two runners with the same crown because i mean you wanna you wanna go fast on both decks and definitely you know if you have a small difference like one, one cm uh, one cm in the in, in the crown it doesn't make uh, any difference but uh, if you will be you know asymmetric with both runners uh, don't wonder if you on one tech you go fast and on the other guy on another on another on the tech probably the other guys will be sailing faster around you but then you know why good so i fix i fix the runner in the device and then uh, this is very simple laser level measurement system where I just uh, glue it kind of uh, wooden tubes 
with a cut, two cuts in the on, on, in, 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 the, in the middle on them, which I'm gonna put later on here on the edge of the runner. Then I switch the laser, and uh, I have a vertical line on the wall, which is like uh, four or five meters away from this place, and then I will slide this level through the edge, and then I will be watching the red point going, climbing up on the wall, and uh, then if it goes vertical and it keeps close to the line, this means that the runner is straight. If if this point will be making horizontal horizontal moves, which means the runner is not straight, and then you have to do your work again. That's why actually, you know, once once you start sharpening the uh, the runners, you should do the check, not when the runner, you know, is already like finished with 180 or 200. 40 uh, uh, sandpaper on bed, on bed. I mean, you always should do it once you once you are uh, just uh, working with 120 or even 80 uh, uh, bed. This uh, save your time and work because what what ha what happens pretty often that you finish you finish happening your runners or even you just did stunning and then you check this. And then suddenly you realize that the run is not straight, so you have to start to work from beginning, which is a little disappointing. It happened to me many, many times already. So once you finish off uh, sharpening, sharpening your runners, it is important to to make a notes uh, and and uh, just try to understand and to learn uh, which runner is uh, has uh, how much crown and uh, um, what what the, what the angle of the edge. And uh, I have a, here a small list, and this list uh, contains all the runners I have, and uh, with different, uh, with different, uh, a, I mean, length of the crown, and uh, the different runners, which I, which I have in my repertoire since uh, 25, 30 years. So that's maybe too many, but it doesn't matter if you are a beginner. Or you have a less runner, or more runners, or you just are more advanced. Important is that you you know you know uh, what kind of runner you gonna use and how much crown this is have. And uh, you know having this uh, on the list is nice, but uh, I learned that uh, you know when once you once you change once you once you on the ice and you have a ten runners with you or even more runners with you, you you just. You might lose control, and you might uh, actually choose the, the the wrong runner. And uh, what I do, I just uh, simply write on the runner on the on the inner side. You know the uh, 25, 25. This is the crown, and that's the 100 degrees. And uh, you know I put the runner on. I go sailing, and I feel. How, how this runner behave, it's going fast or not fast, or you know, the other guy's faster, then, you know, once uh, after testing, I can come back and just say, okay, maybe I try now the runner, was good, got maybe 22, 21, if I need more grip, maybe this runner gonna have a not enough grip, or different way. So, uh, always it is important to know and to keep it simple. And uh, when you start sharpening your runners, and working on them. I think the most important thing what you have to bring, this is the time and you gotta be relaxed. You know, you cannot sharpening, you, you cannot start sharpening runners when you are in a rush. And uh, what I always do, I try not to sharpen more than actually two or, or four runners um, at the same time because it is, it is quite a quite challenging task and uh, it's not about quantity, it's about the quality. So I am very happy if I finish my uh, f finish finish uh, sharpening runners after two days, and I got two or or three runners just how I like it. You have to be aware that, uh, and we know uh, everybody that we 
we use those runners in, in different uh, ice conditions and temperature conditions. And uh, we all know that uh, while you, w once you put the, uh, the runner on, on, the, uh, on the sharpening machine, the, the stainless steel, the steel is getting hotter and uh, uh, the runner actually is becoming more crown. So it's very important to cool down the runner properly after you just did uh, some job on it. So myself, I, I have a one rule that uh, you know, if I if I am getting closer to the crown and I finish my runners with uh, with with for example with 80 uh, with a belt 80 or or 120, I just leave leave the runner outside uh, during the night and uh, you know I, I I look at the temperature like minus five or minus 10 degrees and uh, I check I check the runners the next day or. Uh, two days later, once they really, really have cooled down. And uh, I am actually s sh sure or safe that uh, this is the uh, more about uh, temperature and the, the, the straightness of the stainless steel and the stainless steel is cool enough and the crown is uh, the rarity uh, crown, uh, crown. We all know that uh, on the ice, or when we keep the runners uh, in the car for the night, and it is quite cold in the night, this is uh, that something is happening to the runners, and the, uh, the, the crown is getting as well a little bit straighter. So uh, it is important as well to check to check the runners on on the straight edge once they are, I would say, in their range, or uh, uh, once they are cold, because. I tell you, if you check the crown, like now, when, when here inside, you have a 15 degrees. And then you put, you, you put, the, put, uh, put the runners, and then okay, you cool down the runners down to minus 5, there will be definitely change in the crown. And it is important to check the crown in the temperature range when uh, uh, you're going to use them because uh, there will be different, I mean, crown or requirement for the runners which you usually want to use in minus 10, minus 15 degrees uh, or in, um, you know, on the ice which is covered by water. So we all know that uh, well-prepared runners are giving you, uh, ad not advantage, but are giving, giving you a good base uh, for uh, having a good speed for being competitive. But uh, I always, uh, ask uh, friends, uh, ice boaters, what is more important? To have uh, good runners or to have a very good mast and sail and nice setup of the boat? Everybody, you know, some guys say, oh, boat, I want to have a boat. Perfect. You know, this is achievable. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it not happens. But I think in, uh, in most cases, we pay too much attention to the runners and don't uh, learn or don't try enough to use the uh, potential of the rig of the mast and sail combination and uh, you know definitely with the runner plank which has a big influence on the on the performance and the simple question to answer for you is which car is going to uh, going to, uh, is we will be uh, going faster. The car with a stronger engine and bad tires, or car with a good a good a good uh, uh, tires, but with the weaker engine. Yeah, my answer is simple. The car who's got faster engine, I mean a stronger engine, will be going faster. Okay, it is gonna be more difficult to to to, to keep it under control under control in, uh, yeah, on the road, but it is going to be faster. It was a long day today. I've forgotten to tell you that my guest lives 170 kilometers away. We spent four hours today uh, recording quite a lot of material and uh, I'm just tired, but there will be a lot of nice stuff coming, coming up soon. 
so stay tuned, subscribe, like and visit the channel. Good night.